A T-Rex named Sue. Sue Hendrickson's Huge Discovery. By Natalie Lunis. One last look. Susan Hendrickson searched the dry, rocky ground below the cliff. She knew she didn't have much time. The other members of her team had gone into town to get a tire fixed. Soon they would be back at camp, getting ready to leave South Dakota's Badlands. The summer was ending, and so was the team's hunt for dinosaur fossils. Susan Hendrickson in South Dakota's Badlands. After only a few minutes, Susan spotted some brown pieces of bone at her feet. Then she looked up. Several large bones were sticking out of the cliff. Susan climbed up to get a closer look. Wow, she said to herself. Fossil hunters use clues from the bones they find to learn what extinct animals, such as dinosaurs, look like how they moved, and where they lived. North America's badlands are full of rocks that have been shaped by harsh winds. In some places, these lands look like the surface of the moon. A fossil hunter named Sue. One adventure always seemed to lead to another in Susan Hendrickson's life. By the time she was 20 years old, she had become an expert diver. During a diving trip to the Dominican Republic, she visited the mountains. She saw a piece of amber there. Inside was an insect. It was millions of years old, yet perfectly preserved. A piece of amber is tree sap that hardened and became stone millions of years ago. Sometimes an insect became trapped in it while it was still a sticky liquid. The insect trapped inside this amber is 45 million years old. Susan read all about amber, insects, and ancient life. She became an expert on fossils and was invited to join a dig in Peru. There she met another fossil hunter. He asked her to join a new dig this time in the badlands of South Dakota. Susan and other fossil hunters found this whale skeleton while searching the Atacama Desert in Peru. The Bones in the Cliff. On August 12, 1990, Susan steadied herself on the cliff in South Dakota. She looked carefully at the bones. She could see they belonged to a huge dinosaur. The bones were hollow. Among large dinosaurs, only meat eaters had hollow bones. Susan put the facts together. The only huge meat eater known to have lived in this area was Tyrannosaurus rex. So far, no high-tech equipment has worked well for finding fossils. We don't have machines to find them, Susan has explained. Only the human eye. Susan at the spot in South Dakota's Badlands, where she found the dinosaur bones in the cliff. Susan couldn't wait to tell the others. After all, only 10 Tyrannosaurus rex, T-Rex, skeletons had ever been found. Almost all of them were missing many bones. Could this new find turn out to be as huge as it seemed? Blue, some of the places where T-Rex has been found. Red, place where Susan's T-Rex was found. Dinosaurs lived in every part of the world, but T-Rex bones have been found only in Western North America. The Tyrant Lizard King. Tyrannosaurus rex skeletons were first found in the early 1900s. At that time, scientists gave the dinosaur its name, which means Tyrant Lizard King. Today's scientists still think that T. rex ruled as the largest and fiercest meat-eating dinosaur of its time. 
T-Rex was about 40 feet, 12 meters, long, and 15 feet, 4 meters, high at the hips. Its size is often compared to a school bus. T-Rex's sharp, curved teeth were the size of bananas. They helped T-Rex rip into the flesh of the dinosaurs it ate. The monstrous meat eater's jaws were powerful enough to crush its victim's bones. T-Rex lived around 67 to 65 million years ago, near the end of the time of the dinosaurs. A dinosaur graveyard. The Badlands of South Dakota are one of Earth's great dinosaur graveyards. Fossil hunters search the cliffs because they are like rocky tombs. Dinosaur bones have been buried there for millions of years. From dinosaur to fossil. One, a Tyrannosaurus rex dies. Two, the animal's soft parts, such as its flesh and eyes, rot away. Its hard parts, such as teeth and bones, are left. Three, layers of sand and mud cover the bones and teeth. Minerals in water seep into the bones and teeth and fill all of the tiny spaces in them. Very few of the dinosaurs that lived long ago became fossils, however. If a dead dinosaur didn't get buried quickly, it would rot away. The T-Rex that Susan Hendrickson found must have been buried suddenly, perhaps during a flood. Otherwise, its bones would not have been preserved until that summer day in 1990. Dinosaur bones that become fossils are usually covered with sand or mud. Over millions of years, the sand or mud changes to rock. Four. The bones and teeth survive as fossils for millions of years. A T-Rex named Sue. When Susan's team saw what she had found, they were as excited as she was. They agreed that the bones belonged to a T-Rex. The team decided to name the giant animal after its discoverer. From that day on, the dinosaur was known as Sue. Using only simple tools, Susan and the rest of the crew cleared away the huge amount of rock that lay on top of the bones. The next day, the fossil hunters got to work. Their first step was to remove 30 feet, nine meters of rock from the cliff. They couldn't use heavy machines because the fragile fossils might get damaged. Instead, the team used shovels, crowbars, and picks to reach the bones. Once they did, they were amazed by what they saw. Susan and her co-workers had no way of knowing if their T-Rex was male or female. Today, scientists are trying to find ways to identify a dinosaur's gender by looking at its skeleton. Fossil hunters put this sign up for fun in the area where Sue was discovered. Sue is unearthed. The team uncovered more and more bones. They couldn't believe their luck. Sue was the largest and most complete T-Rex ever found. She just kept getting better and better. We were all in such shock. Susan recalled. Fossil hunters Susan Hendrickson, Peter Larson, and Susan's dog, Gypsy, pose with the skull. For 17 days, the fossil hunters dug up the bones. They left a layer of rock around each one to protect it. They also covered the blocks of rock with layers of burlap and plaster. Now the fossils could be safely loaded onto trucks. At last, Susan and the others left the Badlands, still happy and excited. They were looking forward to seeing Sue's skeleton put back together. Yet, they were in for another shock. Recording information is an important part of fossil hunting. 
the team took many photos to show exactly how and where each bone was found. The team covered this rock with layers of burlap and plaster to protect Sue's bones, which were inside. The battle over Sue. The trucks holding Sue's bones drove to a laboratory in South Dakota. Experts there spent months cleaning and studying Sue's bones. Their work, however, came to a sudden stop. Different people and groups claimed to own Sue. Among them were the owner of the land where the fossils were found and the U.S. government. FBI agents came and took the bones away. Before the legal problems began, fossil experts started removing rock from around Sue's skull. Tyrannosaurus Sue was now caught up in a legal battle. For five years, the battle dragged on. Finally, Sue's fate was decided. The judge ruled that Sue belonged to the landowner. He was free to sell the bones if he wished. Sue's case made headlines. TV newscasts and newspapers across the country reported on the battle over the bones. Sue's bones were packed in boxes and stored while the trial dragged on. Sue is sold. The landowner who had won the court fight decided to sell Sue at an auction. The event took place at Sotheby's, a fancy auction house in New York City. Sue's skull was put on display in a showroom. The rest of the bones were kept in a warehouse about 40 blocks away. Sue's skull at the auction house. Many people came to the auction. Some were private collectors. Others were from museums. In less than 10 minutes of bidding, the gavel came down. Sue had been bought by the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. Their winning bid was $7.6 million. The Field Museum worked hard to raise money to bid on Sue. They received a lot of help from businesses, including the McDonald's Corporation and Walt Disney World Resorts. Including all the auction fees, the Field Museum paid a final price of $8.36 million for Sue. It was the highest price ever paid for a fossil. Sue's new home. The Field Museum turned out to be a perfect home for Sue. Fossil experts continued the work that had begun in South Dakota. Over the next two years, they finished cleaning the bones and the gigantic skull. They also made models of missing bones. Huge banners outside the Field Museum announced Sue's arrival. Visitors to the museum could look into the laboratory where Sue's bones were being cleaned. Finally, it was time to put the skeleton together. Sue would have to take one more trip. This time, the fossils were shipped to a giant art studio in New Jersey. A steel frame was built there. It held Sue's bones in place. Each bone could be removed so that scientists could study it up close. Sue's skull was too heavy to be held up by a steel frame. The museum made a model of the skull that was light enough to be displayed on top of the skeleton. Workers pieced together Sue to prepare the skeleton for display. Sue's Big Day. It was the morning of May 17, 2000. In the Grand Hall at Chicago's Field Museum, the music began. Spotlights and mist swirled. A curtain fell. Sue's fans were finally meeting the giant T-Rex. People from around the world came to the event. Among them was Susan Hendrickson. Sue on opening day. Seeing her standing there, 
This amazing creature that once walked our earth took my breath away, Susan later said. Susan believed that the best thing about Sue was that the dinosaur would inspire people to learn more. Scientists at the museum agreed. Behind the scenes, they had spent more than two years learning about Sue. Museum scientists decided to put Sue's skeleton in an action pose. The T-Rex looks like it is moving forward and turning to check out something off to the side. Sue's skull is displayed in a glass case. Now visitors can come face to face with Sue. Getting to know Sue. Sue's skeleton included kinds of T-Rex bones that had never been found before. Scientists learned new facts about how T-Rex looked and moved from them. By studying Sue's skull, they discovered that T-Rex had a better sense of smell than they expected. Today, most scientists think that birds are the descendants of dinosaurs. Bones from Sue's skeleton gave them more evidence of the dinosaur-bird connection. Scientists took high-tech CT scans of Sue's skull. To do so, they had to use a giant machine that was built to examine airplane engines. Many mysteries remain, however. How did T-Rex use its tiny arms? Is Sue really a female? Did T-Rex hunt live animals or feed on dead ones? Or did it get food both ways? With questions like these still waiting to be answered, the work is far from done. Tyrannosaurus Sue's future might turn out to be as exciting as the dinosaurs past. At the museum, Tyrannosaurus Sue towers over visitors, just as the dinosaur once towered over other animals.